I think. There we go. We Boom. live. Welcome back, everybody. Another Tuesday night chat with the muskrat, Mr. Creole Catfishing. Tonight, we are joined by none other than Mr. Ray Ferguson. What's up, Ray? How are you doing? We are dodging some storms. So, uh, yeah. Uh, most of you guys, I'm sure you haven't turned on a, a Facebook or a, a, a radio or a television today and not heard about the crazy storms moving across the country. They are right bearing on top of me right now. So we're under tornado watches and warnings. Uh, everybody around me is uh, sending me messages that they've seen tornadoes within the 20, 30 miles of here. So uh, wow. my sirens go off. This guy's out. <laughs> I'm going to go. Tuck my head between my legs and kiss my butt goodbye, as I was told earlier. <laughs> I don't know who would have the nerve to tell you that. I have no idea. <laughs> so, uh, no, first of all, seriously, I, I want to say if, uh, you know, those of you that have been impacted or have friends and family impacted by the storms, uh, prayers going out to you guys. Yep. Uh, and if you are anywhere near and you need some help, you know, reach out and we'll try to get get whatever we can put together for you. Uh, I know Mike Greenwell earlier, um, the tornadoes just basically skimmed right over him. Oh, wow. uh, they, he had some damage around him, but not him specifically. Um, so it's, it's bad out there. It's, you know, it's going to, it's going to get worse. So, um, so everyone just kind of keep everybody in your thoughts and prayers. I'm sure that uh, we'll be missing some folks tonight that are closely watching the, um, the radars and the, Ryan Hall and all that good stuff. So, yep. Yep. Uh, but we're going to continue on tonight and uh, do our very best to uh, to bring in some quality information and uh, and uh, talk about the wonderful world of catfish and say a prayer for Ripley. Rest Union area confirmed tornado on the ground right now. I'm getting video updates from several River Rat members. And mm. Let me hop over here get my um, get my Facebook uh, side going yep. so I can see just who all we got. I can see uh, I can see some of the Facebook names. Got a couple of them. them. And uh we'll and then we'll say some hellos real quick and then we'll get kicked yep. off and get started. Let me uh get all right, that's muted. All right, that was William Matthew saying say say a prayer for uh, Ripley. So yep. thanks, brother, for tuning in. We've got Bob Denon also over on Facebook. What's up, Bob? Thanks for tuning in. He says, Hello, Ray Ferguson, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, How you doing, Bob? I think Bob's making himself a, a living legend uh, with what he's been doing with the King Cat series, man. Uh, right. You know, I know we were talking a little bit before the show started, but uh, just watching the growth of what they've been doing with that, uh, with the onboard, you know, online camera stuff, um, just the forward thinking of what's right. been going on over there is just really awesome. Um, seeing the the quality of production that's going into these videos that they're putting out and, you know, of course being, uh, you know, on, on cable television now. And, uh, you know, hopefully we get, we start getting the sponsors and recognition that the sport deserves and needs right. to excel. So, uh, just, yeah. just refreshing to see how that's been, how that's been going before we get rolling, rock and roll too far. We'll, we'll take a quick hello to everybody. I see big wrenches in the house. Stonefly 71s out here with us. Curtis Cunningham. There's Mike Greenwell. You got your brother, Andrew D in the house. Josh Parham's in the house. 922 crappie barbecue. What's going on, big guy? Uh, Brian B catfishing. What's up, brother? Ben Wall fishing. Hope you guys are staying safe. Buckeye catfishing. Same, same with you, brother. Hope all is well. Got Dustin Clark, Dale Hayslip. Let's see who else we got. Uh, well, Lance McCoo guy in the house, John Boy's catfishing, Bugman 22. What's going on, Mr. Jeff right? Deal? We were just talking about Mr. Bob Den. There he is himself. We got uh, Daniel Berry, sports highlights. What's happening? Crop Day Fish on my tournament partner now, Mr. Jerry Parker. What's uh -oh. happening, brother? Good to see you. That's a, that's a dangerous duo right there. I know, and the fish aren't in danger, though. Trust me, just us. <laughs> <laughs> There's Skip Stewart, uh, Clearview Outdoors. Skip dropped a great video this week. His new PB flathead we caught last week, 53 pounds. Yeah. Dropped it right in his mouth. Man, that was awesome. I like it. Let's see. Let's see. We got Eddie with the River Junkies in the house. We got everybody, everybody's favorite, Miss D. What's uh, going on, D? Good to have in the house. At, uh, Greg Burgess, one of my Louisiana brothers. We got Mr. Kelly Bullock in the house. 
Pontoon Jody is here with us. What's going on, Jody? Let's see. The we got boss. Mama in the house. That's the boss. That's the boss. Beware. Watching, I'm sure she's not. watching here and in there. Yeah, she's watching both sides. Butterflies and sunshine in the house. Let's see. I want to make sure I don't miss anybody. Nubby's Pontoon. catfishing. That's it. Pontoon Jody. Harold, Harold Bolton, channel, channel Harold member there. In the house. Mr. Thomas JG Wilkins here. in the house. What's going on, JG? Good to have you, brother. Let's see. I, Mr. Lynn Leeper in, in here yeah, as Lynn. well. I believe he was in like early. Looking forward yeah. to the show talking about uh, yep. recalling our, our conversations back at CatCon. He was he stayed up with yep. us. I don't know. Ray, we stayed up to like two o'clock in the morning or later talking catfishing and just talking. Yep. See, we got David Smith in the house. Uh, Big Bill's veteran catfishing was happening. Marillo. Oh, let's see. Coming on down the list. Got Wabash Nates in the house. Mr. Marillo. What's time? Agent Marillo. Mr. Marillo wants to know if Ray fishes as good as he can run a grill. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we try. Nice. That, that salmon was good, man. I was, I was hey, impressed. That, my boy was, hey, he wouldn't let me down, none. He stayed right there with me. I seen him. He didn't, he didn't have any help at first. And I was like, man, I'm going to sit back and watch. And uh, me and him hit it off. Yeah. There you go. So we there were keeping go. everybody fed. Yeah, That's definitely. Good, good time. Because, hey, cat fishermen love to eat. We all know that. Yeah, we got to have a reserve. Right. <laughs> right. We What's need up, Sue? Danny Stone. What's up, Danny? We may or may not have made it to the end. We may or may uh, not have missed a couple. Every, every time I think I get to the end, it jumps on me, so. Yeah, but Stan three is in the house. What's up, brother? What's up, Stan three? All right, Ray. I doubt this is possible, but it, if there's anybody in chat that doesn't know who you are, if you don't mind, just kind of give a quick uh, introduction of who you are, where you're from, what what you like to fish for, and all that good stuff. And then we'll talk about what all that stuff is surrounding you. Yes. <clears throat> well, I'm Ray Ferguson. I was born in Augusta, Georgia, and I moved to Knoxville, Tennessee in my 20s, late 20s, and I've been here ever since. And um, I was catfishing at Santee Cooper when I was probably four years old. Ooh. And my whole family did nothing but catfish. And basically, it's just I just carried on the tradition. And I, I took it to a different level, tournament fishing versus just going out and fun fishing. Right. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that uh, that I like most about watching you fish is fishing with your family, and uh, oh yeah, so well, tell, everybody who, you, you, yeah. tell everybody who your fishing partners are there in the house. Uh, well, I fish with uh, Melissa, obviously, mm -hmm. and now we all all fish together. I've even had a couple of tournament trails change some rules so that they allowed us to fish. You know where we could fish to four people. Oh, because there's more of us. There, there's more people that have, you know, two kids and stuff like that. And right. And it's hard to pick between one kid if you know if it's not fair. Right. Yeah. You know. So you know, they, that's the way they look at it. And uh, one particular tournament trail doesn't care how many kids you bring. You know, just bring all the kids you want. Got They're it. good. And and that's what's that's what's really cool. Um, we're not making any money doing this stuff. What we what we can do is change lives, though. You know, that's that's kind of what happened to me as a little kid. I got, my life got changed when I, I caught the first fish, and I've been hooked ever since. Yeah, yeah, it definitely makes a big difference. Uh, when you grow up around that kind of stuff, uh, myself, I didn't, I didn't really. My dad took me fishing. I don't know, a couple, couple dozen times, maybe my entire childhood, but it was enough uh, to to stick. And I, that's all I've wanted to do since then. But um, yeah, watching all watching. it takes is once. Yeah. yeah. One time, that's all it takes is once. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um so you guys you guys end up you end up going out as tournament partners. I've seen videos of you and just you and Niall out there just uh just hamming it out and, and having a good time. Yeah. And it's it cracks me up, man. And uh it, you know, you're fishing in big tournaments with big money, big you know, big points on the line and you've got your son out there just you and him. And that's, that's how much it means to you uh, to just keep it simple and have fun. Oh yeah. And, uh, 
he he he's the reason why I'm, he's got to go back to school. He's got to go to school this year. So this is his last year. So I said, well, me and him can fish this year because after that, it's you know we're not going to be able to do it. Right. You know they don't they don't fix around your school schedule. So oh, yeah. I'm kind of getting kind of getting hooked. So, but we're having, we're having fun, man. That's just it's pretty cool. It's cool for him to wake up. He'll tell me to wake him up at three o'clock in the morning. So we go <laughs> fishing. What what five year old does that? I know. Yeah, well, he it, goes it, to bed at night. He'll say, "Let's no, get up at two. <laughs> I feel <laughs> Uh, so, <clears throat> so let, let's talk a little bit about what's going on around you. You've got a lot of uh, king cat titles and a couple belts hanging on the wall. And uh, those are all just from this year so far. And this is only April. Yes. Well, we've got the 2023 signature series. That was one of the first things they, uh, one of the things they created so that uh, what they done is they took an elite group of people. And they wanted to, to, to kind of showcase this. And yeah. uh, the best of the best, you know, they, there was a there, there was some heavy hitters in this group. And it would stay down to the line. And that was me, Donnie, and Lonnie. Uh, we were lucky enough to, to win that. And then, uh, then they go to the Sweet 16. And the Sweet 16 is they take the top 16 travelers and put them together. And they, we fish a bracket just like basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you get teamed up with two people and you fish off and then you get down to the final four and then the final four fish off for the last day. Yeah. And that's uh that's a, that's a very, that, that particular tournament is more than just a tournament. You have to do a lot of strategy on that deal. You got to do a lot of thinking and, and trying to fish against, you know, you got to fish against the caliper of people. You know, yeah. and it's, they're, Sometimes you get caught swinging for the fences and you make it. Um, but it's yeah. that's that's a very enjoyable tournament. Um, we got the Watts Bar tournament. We got Big Fish in second. We got uh, Pickwick. We got third. Kentucky Lake, we got second Big Fish. And I think we ended up second there. Um, we've done pretty good this year. Yeah. I can, I can and, see and that. We got the, we've got my belts. So I won the world championship in 2011 mm -hmm. and, and to give a little history around 2013, I just quit tournament fishing. Mm -hmm. I had a partner, uh, his name was Snuffy Smith is what we called him. And, um, it was James Smith is what his real name was, but everybody mm -hmm. knows him by Snuffy. And, uh, well, he passed away and around 13, I just quit fishing. And, me and Donnie Lonnie have been friends for years and competitors. And he called me up. I think it was 21. He called me up around 21 and said, Hey, let's start. You need to start fishing with me. And we, we started fishing together. And then in 22, uh, Lonnie, his brother started fishing. We all three started fishing together. And, and the history had, it. we just took off and, you know, it took us about a year to start gelling. And once we got our, got our act together we started performing and, and i mean act together there's there's a lot of stuff that happens from your hooks to your rods to the line that you use um everything's got to be perfect in these tournaments you cannot have a hiccup right yeah. and that's that was the you know learning curve to get everybody that was comfortable with whatever hook you was using to whatever it you could you can't bring three I can't bring four poles of mine and put on a tournament boat and fish with another guy's three different poles. You just and that's kind of what we were doing. We was kind of just playing around. And uh and then I said one day I was like, listen, we need to get all the same rods. Yeah. And that's yeah. it went from there and then and it all changed. Yeah. Then we started I, using I, everything identical. Yeah, that's that's one of the things we picked up. We talked to Donnie and Lonnie at the uh, CatCon, and uh, that's that's one of the things that they mentioned was uh, they started going with the, all the same rod, no matter what rod yeah. they reel down on or what rods pulling out a planer board. They all look mm -hmm. exactly the same because they're all exactly the same action, same line, same everything. Yeah. So if something's yeah. off, then something's going on. It's easy right. to identify. And 
I really kind of that really kind of sunk in with me because I run. Well, unfortunately, right now I'm, I'm starting over from scratch. I got I got robbed and lost everything. Mm-hmm. So I, I've got a smorgasbord of rods and reels going together. But I I do see the importance and the value yeah. of having all the same you know action or same gear. Uh, Cause I noticed that when I run boards, like I don't care. I've, I've said this to a lot of different people. Like I don't care what board you use. There's lots of great ones out there, but use all the same board, no matter what it yep. is, you know, run three or four of the same board because when you swap them out, when you get a fish on that middle board and you rotate the rest out, if they're pulling different, it messes everything up. You know what I mean? Yep. Just, oh, yeah. But, uh, yep. but yeah, That's I, key. it's all gotta be the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, I didn't I didn't truly appreciate that either until you know the past about six months. I finally have all identical setups, and now I see what everybody's talking about with having right. the same rods. I don't have to say, oh, wait a minute, that's the soft rod, or no, wait, right. that's the stiff rod. It you just they all act identical and it it does mean a lot. Well, I mean, take take it like this. You got a uh, you got a flathead that's biting, and you've got it on a light rod. Mm-hmm. Well, he's gonna he's gonna pull it over, but how far are you gonna let him pull it over versus if he was on a heavy rod? Right, right. You know, he, he's got to pull it off about two eyes in the water to get the hook set on a on a light, and then you got to you know, you just start if he just starts bending, you know, you can get him. So it, it, it's just everything is you got to be very man. I'm telling you, it, it's not easy. It's not easy. Yep. The, yeah, they were trying There's to sell us on the uh, Anvil Extra, the extra heavy rods there at CatCon. <laughs> it's like I don't think, I don't think we need extra heavies here on the <laughs> on the Ohio. But well, if you, I, that's what I use on the Ohio. Uh, but what I'm doing is, where like you'll suspend, I'm right. suspend fishing. That's what I use my extra heavies for. It's suspended. Yeah, yeah. Because so, I'll put eight and ounces on there and and go at it. So, yeah, but it's just whoever, whatever you use, just use the same thing every time, and you know, you know what's right. happening. Yeah, you that's, know exactly how the thing behaves. What What's funny is if you ever look at my boat, I'm allowed to have twenty or thirty rods. <laughs> and the reason, the reason wow. why, and I hate this, man. I just truly hate it. I hate going somewhere where I can anchor, and then I hate somewhere where I can suspend and drag because I got to have it all. I've got to have my suspending stuff ready to go. So I gotta have 10 rods for suspending, 10 rods for anchoring, and 10 rods for dragging. Wow. Because I don't use it, I don't use an extra heavy to drag. I use a I use a, a medium, medium to medium light. Because oh. I want that rod to be able to, to yeah. kind of lay over. Mm. And that, the, the more it lays over, the less chances you're going to get hung. If it's real stiff, you get it, you get it hung up a lot more dragging. And you got, but, you know, my, in my opinion, you got a lot more natural presentation uh, from the bait, yep. not just jerking across the bottom. Yeah, my opinion. Yep. That's it. That's it's all in the it's all in the demonstration. However, you present that to that fish is what it's gonna, and and it takes different rods to do everything. That's why I hate it. <laughs> I, I hate going to places. I, I want to catch them anchored. Is what I'd like to do. So I ain't got to worry about suspending and carrying all these bunch of rods. And then you got to throw bumping in on it. Oh, oh yeah. 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 So forget about bumping. We can't forget about yeah. that. <laughs> no, because you could go, you could go to a, a, a lake on the Tennessee and, and they could have floodgates open. Man, you got to go bumping. Yep. So, <laughs> you I mean, dang. And, I like that. You might be suspended. That. You might be dragging. You never know. Yeah. So, I love how you, you said, got to you got to go. There. <laughs> you you got to just, yeah. Go. I mean, it's, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I, uh, I I picked up a lot of, a lot of different bumping rods at CatCon. You know, like, like I said, I started from scratch, and uh, I end up going with an anvil uh, bumping rod. Uh, I haven't got to use it yet, other than just playing around. But uh, mm-hmm. did you get the full handle or the partial? I did the partial. All right. I know a lot of so people said they should have did the full handle for the you know putting in the rod holder and stuff. But I, I never yeah. put my I never put my bumping rod in the rod holder yeah, and, except to land a fish. That's it. Do you do you fish anybody else? Yeah. You fish by yourself? No, I fish with. I, I so, usually fish with at least one guy. So what are you going to do when I got an eighty on and I need you to net him? Where are you going to put your rod? 
I'm going to put it in right order, but it ain't going anywhere. I know when that other 80 gets on yours and tears it all to pieces, it's happened. We've <laughs> been bumping along. We've been bumping along and had to stick a rod in the rod holder, and a 50-pounder busted the rod. And I reached out and grabbed it in midair. Oh, wow. And reeled the fish in. Okay. And we ended up that was that was on the Mississippi River, Mississippi River monsters, and I think we ended up third. So it happens. That's yeah. that's why that was my, it was my idea to put that full handle on there. Ah, I got Just you for that reason. Huh. Yeah, I uh I I don't know what caused me to, to choose the split. Uh I don't remember what, what my reasoning was. Maybe it just looked cool. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's what a lot of people think it's more sensitivity, but it ain't. But another thing you can do with that suspended rod that people don't tell you, I mean, the bumping rod, say if you was running down the river and I've got a fish on, you could reel yours up and suspend it right off the bottom. Yeah. And while, while you're fooling around trying to get the fish in, you'll catch one on that other pole. Yeah. Just that easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, we've done that. Uh, yeah. Uh, cool cast wants to know what's your what's your thoughts on your starling now that uh, you've been using it a few times oh, i love it. it it's smoking i figured out what was wrong i had it too close to my windshield so i moved it out on the front of my deck and and it's it's right now gotcha oh, really? no problem heck yeah and the cool thing is like um you can use that anywhere if you got a, an outlet you can plug it in and you have internet Really? That is cool. Yeah. You just, <laughs> I got it in a little suitcase, a little Peloton case, and it stays closed up. I plug it in, and it works. That is cool. Your internet goes out in your house, plug it in, you got it. No kidding. Instant. Huh. That's you cool. can plug it in the back. You can plug it into your truck as you drive down the road. No hmm. kidding. I know a lot of us, you know, do the live streaming stuff and especially now with the birth of the online tournament league where, you know, yep. people are going to be taking more and more serious look at, you know, fishing is online tournaments. And yep. a lot of the problem with a lot of folks is their good fishing spots don't have good service. And why do you think I got Starling? <laughs> they were smoking me. I was like, dude, this I've never fished like this. I've never yeah. fished for a signal. And um, I got the, the first online tournament I fished with was uh, not to us cats, but uh, Brian Brian St. Elma. Mm -hmm. uh, about two years ago, we fished on Wilson. Uh, yeah, it was Wilson, and you got spotty service there. So I was fishing around for a service, not necessarily for fish. And uh, they smoked me on that one. And then I come out here to this uh, to this with the online guys and I fished two and they smoked me. I mean, they got me. I was like, I'm not going to do this anymore. I said, <laughs> I got to figure out a way to get me a signal. And uh, that's, that's kind of what what's, happened. What's it roughly cost to start uh, the setup of Starlink? I think it's 150 bucks. And then you have to pay so much for the, for the thing. It may be, maybe a thousand dollars. I may be wrong. 800 to a thousand. And I think you can yeah. even pick up some used. Yeah, Stonefly says it's six hundred dollars for the equipment and one hundred twenty dollars a month for the service. There you go. Yeah, but then you got to have a case that's about two hundred dollars. Yeah. So, Eddie over at River Junkies wants to know what what electronics do you use? What do you trust? And you can have uh, any I use or, Garmin. You I use, use Garmin. Garmin um, it's um, eighty six hundred series Garmin twelve inch three of them. I got you. And then I got a 22 inch. I just put a 22 inch monitor. Um, there's a new guy out with a 22 inch monitor. I put it on there too, and it it's, uh, it it connects to your Garmin and it's touchscreen. A 22. No wow. Is it, yeah. is, is it a Garmin unit or is it is it just a touchscreen that will link to Garmin units? It, it's a touchscreen that links to Garmin units, and I, I can't hmm. think of the name of it to save my life, but I just put it on there. And uh, it works. What I like about it is I can see it from my console. From my, I put it on the passenger side, 
and I can look at I can look down and side scan a lot better now than what I was doing. Oh yeah, twenty two inches. Go read that. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, you, all the all the bass guys that I've been around, uh, they'll be watching me catfishing, but they're looking at my monitor. <laughs> yeah, they're they're over there throwing to the bank looking at me. I'm like, hey, what are y'all looking at? <laughs> there you go. That's we right. won't need windshields on boats anymore. We we'll just use big monitors. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right. Get you two twenty twos and put in front of it. I can I can see that look in Roger's eye. He's wondering, like, man, do I ne really need to pay my light bill this month? Um, <laughs> like, do I really need electricity? Well, I'm sitting there thinking, it's like, well, if it's not an actual unit, a twenty two inch touchscreen might not be that expensive. Four grand. Mm. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Thirty five hundred to four. Uh, you have to mm -hmm. shop around, but they. Uh, so if you wanted a Garmin twenty two inch screen, it's almost fourteen thousand, I think. Gee, what? for one of those. Ooh. Yeah. So now you see why I got the the cheaper one. Yeah. Same quality. Right. But if you ever sit in a boat, you'd have one. I promise you. You wouldn't pay the light bill. You'd go get one. Yeah, I, that that's why I can't see stuff like that in person or fish with someone who has it because I'll be questioning every life decision I've ever made at that point. Zach just upgraded our 12 inch hummingbird to a 15 hummingbird, and I'm like drooling, literally drooling. Now, Zach uh, is in here, he runs all Garmin, and uh, so yeah. I've been and I've got Garmin, so I've been watching like I'm at that point where I'm ready to upgrade to a big unit. But I just don't know whether to stay with Garmin or bite the bullet and go with Hummingbird. I even looked at Lawrence because they're so daggone good. Well, the the Garmin, if you get a twelve, it it will give you a full display on that twenty two inch screen. But you got to have a, a twelve unit. Anything less than that, you only have partial screen. Really? Huh. And the cool thing is, is that twenty two inch monitor will work with any unit. It'll work with a Hummingbird or a Lawrence. But the problem is, it's really made for Garmin because it, it, it the touch screen will work. Uh, so if you, so so it just mirrors one of your units. I got you. It's all it's really doing. It's only mirroring. Where if you went with a, a twenty eight a twenty from twenty two inch from Garmin, it would be, you know, its own unit. You know, it would work everything. But it's just like networked in. That's good to know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, that's a big deal. You better believe yeah. it. Yeah, well, like I said it works. You can use it on anything, but you just won't have you won't be able to do the touch screen if you don't have a Garmin. Right. Uh, does all the other functions on it work? I mean, you, you know, any, anything that you could do on a touch screen, it worked. So if you had a Solix, it would still work. It would still work, but you would only be able to operate it from the Solix. You wouldn't be able to operate it from the 22 inch screen. I got you. I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah. What about what about live scope? Are you running live scope with your Garmin? Yep, I run two of them. Two of them. Yeah. And, and uh, so, how's that? How's that playing a factor into your uh, bait fishing and your mm -hmm. cat fishing? Well, I don't use it for bait fishing. Gotcha. I just use it for catfish. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the, is that a secret we can go into, or is that something you got? Yeah, I don't mind. Whatever you want to ask, I'm here. Um, so basically, uh, more more so along, along the lines of, and, and we have a show coming up based on this specific title. Uh, Spencer Bauer is actually going to be coming on River Certified and talking about this exact topic, but okay. more so specifically about things that we thought we knew about fish that we're learning through live scope that were, we were wrong about, or we never thought in a million years, like, man, I didn't realize they would do that. Mm -hmm. Is there, is there any cool findings that you found so far? That's like, man, I had no idea the fish would react that way or the fish lingered that long before they bit or. How any, much time we got? Oh, we got all the time in the world, brother. <laughs> we we talked about this all night. So the first thing that I saw with my, my live scope was that I had a, the fish was probably 50. He was in the 50s. Mm -hmm. He come up, he come up and he, he, he was on the bottom. 
and he come up off the bottom and he looked at my bait and I was like, he's fixing to eat it. But he just looked at it. Hmm. And I was like, what's he doing? I mean, he just hung in right behind it. You know, if the, if the bait was here, he hung in right here. All he had to do was open his mouth and he could eat it. Then he backed up and he come up and looked at my lead. And he looked at my lead and swam off. What? Really? It was crazy. And this happened. If it's happened once, it's happened a lot. And now, I hadn't figured that out yet. I'm imagining that one was that was on a suspended rig. Yep. It was on a yeah. suspended rig. He come up and looked at me and left. Wow. And you and you think like you're fishing in a river and you think the fish are positioned like they're just sitting there swimming up the river. Them mugs are swimming in all kinds of circles. They're 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 doing all kinds of stuff. You you have no idea. We've had them we've had them swim around. I've, I've been suspended, and they I had two catfish. Take one was chasing the other one, mm. and they tangled all our lines up. But I actually watched them tangle all the lines up, chasing each other. One had bit the bait and just swam straight in a circle underneath the boat. I was like, I was telling Donnie and Lonnie, I was like, hey, man, there's two under the boat, and they're making laps underneath us. And they're <laughs> like, what? What? I said, yeah, they're making laps. They're going around. They're just running around in circles. Hmm. And they looked over there, and I said, he's on that front pole, and he grabbed it. And when he grabbed it, he had all the lines. Every line, every, they run around the whole, every one of our lines. Run, 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 run. Run. Wow. And, it, and you'd have never knew that happened if you wouldn't have seen it on live show. They're just messing with us. I oh, think yeah. so. We we would we would go up and um, I would tell Donnie and Lonnie because I was I'm just a graph guy. I like that's what yeah. I like to do. Yeah. And uh, I would, we would pull up and I was like Donnie, get that fish off the front pole. And he's looking at the live scope. And I was like, no, you need to get that fish. He's he's got it. He's got it. And it's buried in the water. And he ain't even paying no attention. I was like, y'all got to catch the fish. Don't worry about looking it over here. <laughs> but it's it's pretty amazing to see it go down. What uh, it takes what, a lot of practice. What mode are you running in normally? I do it different ways. If I'm, I, I, that's why I use two. I put okay. one on my trolling motor to to scout, mm -hmm. and the other one I got a pole, and I got a. It's called a uh, sniper pole. Mm -hmm. And the deal with the sniper pole is, is you know, you got your traditional pole that sticks out, but the handle you just twist with your fingers. So I could I could spin that 360 degrees just with my fingertips. Oh, okay. I never have to literally move the pole. I just spin the the, the transducer that way. No kidding, huh? That is big difference. Big difference. But I'm hunting them down. I'm hunting them down just like bass guys are. Oh yeah, yeah. I've been watching some some crazy video footage coming out of you know different guys that are using live scope and and just honestly, I'm I'm more intrigued about catfish behavior. Uh, right. You know things that things that we didn't things that we're learning that we didn't know in the past. You know about fish's behavior. Uh, you know because once we learn the whys, then we can figure out the rest. But right. Uh, but yeah, I, I, that's one of the things that's been in, intriguing me. The more videos I watch is just scratching my head about the, what you know, like, um, what was it? Micah Burkhart and Spencer Bauer put a video out. And they were catching flatheads that were suspended 10 feet off the bottom underneath balls of shad. I was yeah, like, we've been back, though. That's, that's old. We just didn't know what we was doing. I said, yeah. that's old stuff. We've been doing that. We've been doing that. Uh, Larry Muse, uh, Phil King. Those guys have been doing that for years. They just never told anyone. Right. They did. That's they just right. kept it secret. Yeah, that's that. That's just amazing to me. You know, just you know <laughs> what, what I thought I knew about flatheads and what I really know about flatheads, not not so much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got a lot of <laughs> learning. Flathead I caught. One of the biggest flatheads I caught. I was dragging. That's something that doesn't so, happen. No, well, we're going to fish this weekend on the Cumberland River, and these guys are catching the catfish dragon, flatheads. Oh, yeah. So, it's, it's out. You just have to try. You know, yeah. nothing wrong. And you got to try. You got to be, be the first one to do it. Yeah. 
So, yeah. And when I seen live show, I've been using live show since it was out. Oh, I got you. So there's a lot of people that's got a lot of catching up to do. Oh, yeah. To get uh, on to the live show scene. So now, now that you've learned that they're reacting to your sinkers, are, are you doing anything different? Are you just trying to figure out what you can do different? You don't. I, I've tried several different things, but what's funny is it still works. I think it's just educated fit. And really? it's hard to catch an educated fit. Hmm. That's my personal opinion. Um, you'd almost have to sit down there natural with no with no weight, and it's hard to do suspended. Um, I was watching some bass fishing this weekend to kind of pretty much to back up what I was saying, mm -hmm. the guy won the tournament, but he was live scoping and he, he first started, it was a three day tournament. He started off getting short bit bass mm -hmm. fishing. <clears throat> and he said, these fish is educated. I'm not going to catch them. I got to go somewhere where they're not educated. Hmm. Huh. And that's that's the key. Is is finding the uneducated fit. And that's really going looking. You have to go look for stuff. So what about and no one else is fishing? Have you had to change any other uh of your tactics or strategies after you know learnings on live scope? Do you feel like you fish any differently now that you've had live scope and you you kind of have more knowledge on fish behavior than what you had previously more aggressive i'm more aggressive more aggressive yeah i don't uh I, I'm, I'm burning burn quick if i'm, I'm a, if he's gonna bite he's biting it i'm leaving it and so i don't care how big he is he ain't gonna eat it huh. so i just hit him hit him in the head with it and if you don't want it move on to the next one i got you uh, Skip Clearview is asking if, if you can run down what mode works best for what application. So I, Skip's got just got um, live scope on his boat. We actually tried it out last week and we've been trying to figure out, you know, whether which which mode to use for uh, which application. Make it simple. OK, so put it on your your forward mode. Yeah. And. Use one pole. That's it. You don't need a bunch of poles. You just need one fishing pole. Find the fish and put it in front of him. You can look down. You know, if he was suspended, but you can't do that first. You got you got to start somewhere. And the way to start is looking forward, find the fish, and and work on catching it. About how far forward can you look doing that? 60, 60 feet. Sixty feet. Seventy right. foot. 80 foot as much as you want but what you what you why you understand later why i use two is because i'll like i'll find him and then i'll hone in on him mm -hmm. so that's that's the, that's the ticket you, you, you really need to to make it really effective everybody's but, scratching you know right? start, <laughs> yeah start, start on start at first with looking ahead and catching him and, he, and it depends on how he's got it. Does he have it on his trolling motor? Uh, this one here, he's actually got it mounted uh, like a universal mount. He's got it all set up on its own power. So he, he can move it anywhere he wants, but it's got a pole that mounts to the side of the yeah, boat. Yeah, that's what you want. Well, and like I said, it, it's he just needs to hunt, run around with his trolling motor, find the fish, and catch him. He can't miss him. He's huge. You know, watch a lot of the bass videos of the guys catching bass same thing so you locating the fish with with side scan first or are you just going no. to an area you feel is is no no you're just going to an area you feel is going to be holding the fish and you hunt for them find them and catch them wow don't don't play around with it that's a whole different that's a whole different ball game man oh yeah yep. You better believe it. You either hit it, you either can get them or you can't. You know, I mean, that, you got to get them to bite. And that's the, that's the, the whole deal. Yeah. 
You just run around there chasing them. Um, so going back to fishing with, with Donnie and Lonnie, are these the tactics you guys are using, uh, you know, in tournament series? Cause it, it doesn't feel like that's, that's what's, no, no. what's going on. Yeah. I, okay. I was going to yeah, say. Donnie, Donnie and Lonnie's not doing that. No. Yeah. I, I didn't think so. No. <laughs> Matter of fact, you, you said and made a comment earlier, you know, old school, uh, yeah. fishing tactics. And I know that when we talked to Donnie and Lonnie, we, we talked about some, some shallow water tactics and some old school stuff too, that it was just, you know, kind of like dumbing it down. Like, Oh yeah. Why, why weren't yeah. we thinking like that? You know what I mean? Yep. You know, just like silly stuff. Like don't, don't use your motor in you know, in less than eight foot of water or whatever, six foot of water, you know, go in on trolling motor and don't spot lock, you know, throw an anchor or, or put some, you know, down poles out and hold yourself up. You know, don't, don't just scare everything in the area out. Yeah. yeah. When you when you drop an anchor, they know you're dropping an anchor. Mm-hmm. They know. But what helps really truly really when you get shallow, what helps is if you got a bunch of bass guys running in and out of there. To me, that that they're a little bit used to that motor. Mm-hmm. You know, the big motor. So it, it it plays you get back in an area that's secluded, nobody's fishing, then you can't you, you know, you gotta be sneaky. Yeah, but that's what we've 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 won a lot of stuff shallow water fishing, and uh, it just takes patience. Yeah, you know you got to do a lot. Of, what do they say? The fish live in what twenty percent of the water. Oh yeah, yeah. You got to yeah. you got to find that twenty percent. You just can't go out there and, and fish in twenty foot of water and or ten foot of water or five foot of water and say, "Well, I'm in five foot of water. I'm gonna catch fish." That ain't the way it works. So a lot of people that, get distracted that way. So that 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 really is a good question right there that 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 I wanted to ask. And I mean whether it's tournament fishing, fun fishing, whatever it is, when you put your boat in the water and you take off, what are just some of those things that you are looking for in the water, under the water, out on the banks that tells you that makes you turn your head and say, "Whoa, hang on a second. We got to take a look at this." I do it every day. Every everybody I water or go to, I don't care if I fished it a hundred times. Mm-hmm. I try to go to that lake and look for something new. And because the fish ain't always where they were, right? And and like I said, you go back to educate them. You know, you find new stuff. Um, a lot of people want to go to the same old spot and uh, try to catch them, and they do. You know, they catch them. Mm-hmm. But eventually, it's going to run out. Right. And uh, that's what happens. You know, you, you keep going to the same spot. You're gonna, you're just gonna get hammered. Uh, where, where we went and fished that Vicksburg tournament. Donnie and Lonnie, they won it. Mm-hmm. Me and Melissa fished separate. Okay. I had enough weight to get into the, to the final four, and my my live well plug come out, and come out twice, mm-hmm. and my oxygen hose come loose. So it's like we run 70, 70 something miles. Yeah. Catch these fish. One way. Not not two way. We run 70 miles two ways. So you, you look at 140 miles of, of running. But uh I had I had issues and, and the fish, I had to let them go because they, they weren't gonna make the way in line. Um, and you you they, weren't they were the only running. angler that that happened to either. No, no, I wasn't the only one. So but I mean it's really you know, that's the chance that you take. Um, All right. And, and what's crazy is I've never had that problem, really. Yeah. But uh, it's just one of those fluke things. So we go back to a different tournament, and but it's the same area. Mm-hmm. And there's 10 boats fishing the same place we were fishing. Mm. You know, you, you got to, that's, that's kind of where I was at. I'm like, you know, the fish were there, and there was people catching fish. But, you know, you just move on. You got to find something new. Yep. So that's why I, every time I go to the lake, I'm looking at something different. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of bad about that too. I'll I'll go, I'll stick with what's worked. You know what I mean? That's like, well, yeah. I know in these conditions, uh, you know, fish are going to be doing this or fish are going to be doing that. And I'll go scan and look in those same areas that the fish are predictable, you know, just a high probability areas. And, uh, yeah. Well, 
every now and then we'll find something off the wall and be like, man, I didn't realize that was there. Man, I never caught fish over here before. That's that's it. A lot of people will go back. They'll have a waypoint and they go back and sit on that same waypoint. And, you know, I, I like I said, I was at the local tournament and uh, I seen four people come up to the same spot and fish because they had caught fish there previous. But the <laughs> fish wasn't there. The fish was over where I was at. And I was catching them, and they just pull up, look, and then that was it. I was like, you know, what are they doing? They got they got depth finders. They know, you know, when you run across the area, that, that, I guess the key is to anyone listening, if your depth finder says there's no fish there, keep going because there's no fish there. Yeah. Just because you caught a fish there last week or yesterday, that they moved. I've yep. been at many tournaments that I could tell you, I, I, and Donnie, Lonnie, we all have done it. We've said, if I feel super confident going into a tournament, I won't catch a fish. I'll skunk out or I'll do yeah. something crazy because I'm so keyed in to work what I what the fish are doing my depth finder and not what the fish are doing. The fish can, the fish change every day. So you have to kind of kind of get a plan of what they're doing, where they're moving to, what are they in a transition state? Is the temperature, the wind, everything plays a factor. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of my online tournaments. I knew I could catch some fish in a spot. And I went there knowing the wind was bad. And I tried every way in the world to catch these fish. But the wind was, it, it just did not work. And I knew when I woke up and looked at the weather, I said, I can't fish that. And I was like, yeah, I can fish it. I can make it work. Yeah. Figure but, something out. Yep. And I ended up, I think I ended up third, you know, but still. And I come on at the last little bit, catching some fish at the end. But it wasn't, it wasn't cool. Yeah. I know and, you didn't some, struggle and, much catching fish during the, the King of the Tennessee tournament, that green belt no. you got hanging over there. No. Oh no, no. That's the difference though. I was I was I went to fish, I was serious. Daryl had stirred the pot. Uh oh. Oh yeah. So we was at we was up there and Daryl said, you know, I'm gonna smoke you, right? He said, We ain't fish together. You're gonna get the brakes beat off of you. I said, Oh really? I said, Oh well, let's go. And uh so I said, I'm gonna get me a satellite and we're gonna see. And uh he was dogging me. Man, he was dogging me. He was like How's that satellite gonna work out for you? It don't catch fish. I ain't seen no hooks on it. <laughs> I can't imagine Daryl talking trash to anybody. I, I just no. oh my that's, god. That's what's so cool about you guys. You know that's hilarious. You can talk trash about each other, no one gets their feelings hurt. Nah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's... Well every, every every now and then, but nah. It, yeah, but you get real. over it. Maybe yeah. Right. Uh, Zach wants to know how shallow a water can are you, are you able to get up on these fish without scaring them? Like with your live scope, are you, are you able to see? You know, outside image of those fish. I want live scope. I want live scope them. The shot. The I'll shallow do that, water. I'll do that on. Yeah, I'll do that on uh, side imaging. So I I'll side image them, and and a lot of times you don't even have to side image them. You know, you just see the right the right scenario. Mm -hmm. And you know the fish is there. You just go at him and catch him. Yeah. So what? At what water depth does does that change for you? Then say I'm no longer live live scoping below this depth. Five foot. Five, five foot. foot. Five. And, foot. and and I'll use the live scope maybe to to find a, a rock or something that the fish is hiding behind. I'll do that. Yeah. So I'll scan an area and find him. But you can do it just as easy with your. What you're going to find out with your live scope. Is that your live scope shows you stuff that your side imaging doesn't? And I can give you an area. You can go to Pickwick Lake, and there's some crappie beds. And I don't know what they've done with these crappie beds, but I was on Pickwick Lake Mark and Rock, big boulders. Mm -hmm. And I was going to suspend around these big boulders and catch the fish, but I've done it for years. And, uh, but well, I, I, really targeted this one area because I knew there was a real good fish. And I come back the next day and I turned my live scope on. And I was getting 
right there. I was right there home. And then all of a sudden I'd have some poles hung up. And I was like, what in the world is going on? And then I started side imaging. I mean, I started doing my live scan and there was, they had built houses for the crappie to live in. Oh, oh my. And then I, I knew about these, but I didn't know that they was this far out. Right. But these guys, they're divers. You know, they, they'll take a boat out there with an oxygen tank and they're going down 30, 40 foot. And build crappie beds. What? I call them, I call them crappie condos, is what yeah. I call them. I've, but yeah, I've they, heard they, about those things. I think uh, uh, Lita Ben has some of those, I believe. Yep, but it is uh, it is unreal. And to see how many condos they got underneath the water there. Mm. And like I said, what's cool about it is your sonar won't find it or your, uh, your side imaging won't find it. Hmm. The only way I was able to find it was with, with live scope. Wow. So that tells you how much better the live scope is than what we what we're using. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I can't wait to check it out. I know like on Zach with his his hummingbird, his side scan on it is impeccable. I mean it's, mm-hmm. it's that live scope blows it away. Yeah, wow. well he just he went with the uh hummingbird, what is it, live act live whatever hummingbird is. That's what he's got now. Yeah. Their version. I'll tell you this. I was casting to a 70, 80 pounder, casting at him, trying to keep up with him. Wow. He was just swimming and I was chasing him. And I was throwing <laughs> out at him, trying to get him to bite. So when you're doing that, that's when you're, you know, once you do that, it's over. You know, you won't go back. It's hard to go back to doing anything else. <laughs> I don't know if I can afford to get hooked on that. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking too. That's what I'm thinking. But it's changed the sport. It's changed yeah. it. It's changed it all. Yep. Yeah. I don't I, even I, want to go fishing. If, if my live scope won't work, I won't. It ain't even worth going. Whew. That's that's a that's a that's a tough statement. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. That is a tough statement. But hey, but if, if, if you're going fishing, if you're going fishing for money, you better have a live scope. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can get that. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah, because, you know, like like in my case, all I can do is, you know, mark them on 2D, set up above them, throw some baits, you know, carpet bomb the area and cross my fingers that one of them's hungry, you know. But if any of them react different or anything is going on behind you know, my baits, I won't know about it. Nope. And that's all I can do is cross my fingers at that point. Right. That's And, and I'm not that guy. If you ask Donnie Lonnie, I'm not that guy. I don't like, I don't like to drag. I can drag with the best of them. I don't want to drag. I don't. I want to find them and catch them. Yep. And you're gonna have good days, and you're gonna have bad days. Yeah. There's a, there's a this lot of kind of a feast. Yeah, it's it's feast and famine. Right. It's a lot self gratification when you're able to find the fish and catch the fish. That's kind of yep. a game we we call. You know, Chris Souders told us that one time. He's like. Just find the fish and catch the fish. Don't, you know, don't go just set up on what you find the fish, set up yep. on the fish and then catch the fish and then go find more fish. Yep. That's it. And uh, if you see me sitting still somewhere, more than likely I already got them. That's <laughs> all I can take. If you, if you see me sitting still, I got them already. I'll just, I'll just pull up, I'll just pull up next to you. I'll just pull up next to you. Hey, what's <laughs> going on? Hey, remember me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it, the, the guys I used to fish around the house, they uh, and I was running and gunning twenty years ago, before running and gunning was ever talked about. Yeah, and I live on I, I live in one of the best areas in the world to catch catfish at the time was Fort Loudon. Mm-hmm. They wrote articles and articles and articles, and then fishermen about it, and it was so common to catch a thirty pound fish. Like I would go to places traveling. And I'd be like, man, I caught four thirties or in four fifties the other day at one time, you know, like in one afternoon. Yep. And and people would thought I was just lying. They're like, there's no way you're catching that man, that that quality of a fish. And so we we had it. And now the pressure has, yep. has pretty much ruined our lake lakes and stuff. Same with by far. We don't know if the commercial fishermen have come in and taken the fish or what, but the fish has just disappeared. Yeah, and uh, we we got Loudon 
80 pounds won it and we was like 79 pounds and wow and we got second place you know that would our lake back in the day would be 130 140 it right. would take to win right uh, and it's gone down that much so but yeah yeah, I mean, I mean, look now when the when the king cat went down to uh, New Orleans and fished that big tournament. You know, that's that's the first big catfish tournament that area's had. You know, at least that I know of, and all the attention that it brought. And now on TikTok, YouTube, and everything else, I see all these people coming from way out of state running down there to New Orleans and going and going fish just because of all the attention it got in that in that one tournament. I looked it up. I really hope. To- Today it's fourteen and a half hours for me. I looked it up today to see how long it take me to get down there and fish. I you think that I, I hope Cabela's has over a hundred boats in that tournament. I, I I really truly think they're going to have a tremendous amount. They have that economy to hold up, and and I really think they'll have a hundred boats show up just because it's a bucket list for everybody. Yeah, and that's uh, and you can go down there and win. You know, I, I guess on a hundred thousand dollar. Uh, I mean, not a hundred thousand, but I'm I'm sure it'd probably be about at least ten ten thousand dollar payout, fifteen thousand dollar payout on hundred boats at least. I would think. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you can go down there and pay your way pretty easy. But the cool thing is, is who cares if you win or lose? If you go out there and catch ten fifty pound fish, <laughs> right? You know, who cares? I'm, I'm more out catching fish. Yeah, yeah, that that that's something. That's something not many people could say because that that whole fishery down there is like maybe two hours south of me, maybe maybe not even that. And though and those of us local to the area, a lot of us agree that that's actually not the best stretch of the river. It's really good. Don't get me wrong; it's really good, but there's there's actually a little better water than that. Believe, you know, believe it or not. Yeah, and that, and that's what's so cool about it. Yeah. People have people have a lot of fun. That's that's what it's all about. We're all supposed to get together and have fun and you know help each other. And that's you know that's that will be a good tournament. I feel like because everybody's going to be extremely happy. Oh yeah, you know, there's, they, they've there's, all fish. Yeah, there's a lot of fish down there. And when you get to that certain part of the uh, of the you know late summer, early fall, you got the saltwater wedge that comes up. That's that's confining some of these fish in some of these areas. And this is you can get on a pile of big fish, you know, pretty easily if if you know where to look for them. Well, that, that goes back to Wheeler, how hard Wheeler gets hit. And and I'm 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 still consider myself a lucky fisherman more than 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 anything. I get lucky a lot. And we had a uh, we had a tournament. Mike Mitchell, you know Mike Mitchell. Mm-hmm. He was running the Southern Catfish Trail. And they had their classic on Wheeler. I showed up on a, in a bass boat. This is how long ago this was. Now I'm fishing out of a, a, a 21 foot bass boat with a two before rod rack on the back. <laughs> 20, 20, I was probably 25, maybe 25, 26, somewhere in that range. Come in with a hundred. We had five fish. 213 pounds of five fish. Gee. And I've never fished this lake. I didn't even have a depth finder that worked. My depth finder quit. The depth, when I put the boat in, it quit. Wow. And to tell you how smart I was, I got an anchor. I'm dropping an anchor over the side to see how deep it is instead of a daggone piece of lead. That's how, you know, I was so tore up about my depth finder not working. I, I was checking the depth with my anchor. And uh, I said, well, it's deep enough. I tied it up and uh, I had a tree that was fell over in the lake. I had those fish caught within an hour. I had 200 something pounds of fish caught in an hour. And I had one fish that I couldn't do anything with. Wow. The next year, the next year we go back, they have a Cabela's tournament. And we go back and we fish this lake. And I'm with my, with my partner that passed away. We had had two sixties in the boat and another fish bit. And you know, your worm gear on your Abu Garcia, the mm-hmm. braided line wrapped around it just once and it didn't allow the drag to pull out. He almost broke an ugly stick tiger rod, heavy, ugly. He had it pulled all the way down to the real seat. 
Wow. When it broke. Mm. So, and there's no telling how big that fish was. But we, we've been in some spots. James River, same way. I fished the James River 20 years ago, and it was incredible. Yeah. You would have to use a you would have to use a whole gizzard shad to keep to even get it a chance at a big fish because the twenty pounders and thirty pounders would eat it up. What's your go to bait now? Whatever they're biting, they change. I use a lot of skipjack. I use a lot of gizzard shad. Um, I don't do the brim much anymore because they're so. But. I may go back to that some this year, um, okay. using some live brim. But that's that's mainly it. You, the big gizzard shad, big get big skip jack. Got you. Got you. That was a question in there. Uh, mm -hmm. Stan three wants to know what is your favorite rig for a river system with sixty degree water. I'm, I'm thinking he's asking for personal information. He's looking for insight. That's awfully specific. That's, that's a very specific yeah. question. I, I definitely put it. I put a float on it, you know, a demon dragon or something. Carolina rig it. Yeah. Get it suspended up off the bottom because those fish are in the mud, more than likely. And that way, they hang it up there. They like to feed up. Mm -hmm. and, and that way, to get them up. You know, they're not that. Act, they're they're kind of laying there waiting. They're 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 just in waiting mode to to see something change. Yep. Uh, somebody asked if you're fishing. Let me go back up here. Captain Morgan wants to know if you're fishing the Poland CR April 13th. Nope. Won't be able to make it. I mean, mm. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, That's a, okay. Skip, a local I, tournament. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Skip, I had one more question about your live scope. He, we played around with this, so we was wondering what your answer is. Uh, do you have a color scheme that you feel best works best for cats? Because we've bounced around um, schemes trying to figure out what, the, what I think it's, it's amber. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a amber. Everything I use is amber. I like, I just like the amber, yep, but there's different it. color schemes that, you know, it, he's got to find out what works best for him. You know, yep. just, just for me, I'm used to, that's what I'm used to looking at. I like the copper. I'm using the copper is yeah. the one that, that works good for me, but, but and, and it's just different people, you know. Let me see here. I know we've had a lot of questions. I've tried to catch most of them. Um, more pigs in the house. What's up, Bill? Thanks for stopping in. He was asking what your favorite method is, which I know you say you like to catch them on anchor, but really, if you're using live scope, you're just putting one rod and you're putting it right in front of the face. Yeah, what I'm saying is. I love to catch them anchored. That's right. what I love to do. I love mm -hmm. to catch them anchored. You know, if I can find some some good stuff to this, that they're they're in there that you can't get to them, mm -hmm. then you have to anchor up on them. Yeah. But sometimes you can't get to them. You got to pull them out. They got to come out to you. So there's there's two different things. I love to anchor because I love to draw them out. Live scoping, just it, live scoping is stressful. Anchoring <laughs> is fun. <laughs> you. you know, that, that, that. Now, I'm having a good day if I'm anchoring, but if I'm live scoping, it's 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 a lot of work. It's all business. Yep. I I, uh, I could imagine myself getting very frustrated watching a big fish stare at my bait and then want to just beat my rod against a screen or something like that. Just it's got to be frustrating to see him do that. It is. It's it's, but you just got to you got to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. And sometimes you could pull up that fish, and what's funny is you could pull up there and spot lock on him and catch him. You know, he may not want it moving. He may want it sitting still. Yeah. It's just, it's funny. I'm telling you, it's, if it, you, there's not a right answer every time. Right. It, every fish is going to be different. Yeah, I, I can I can definitely see that. I, I give you an example. I set up on some fish. We anchored on them. Couldn't catch them. We suspended on them, couldn't catch them. Live scoped them, couldn't catch them. I said, these fish are going to bite something. And I give up. So what did I do? I went out past them. I dropped some baits in front of them and caught a 50 and a 65. Wow. Yeah. 
And I and I fished on these particular fish for right at four hours. Wow. And couldn't get them couldn't get them to bite. I done everything I possibly could and then I give up. And I said, well, let's try to drag them. And I drove across them and they bit. So they just wanted it moving. We, we, they we wanted it move. They wanted to chase it down. Mm -hmm. Here, here we go. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Can you see that comment? What did he say? Yeah, two stands is saying, when is Ray fishing the live fishing tournament league, and how is Ray going to feel when he gets beat by YouTube anglers in this said tournament? Well, it's Smack happened. So, so here's the deal. I've only fished three tournaments, and they've smoked me twice. So I don't know what he's talking about. I'm used to getting smoked. <laughs> hmm. uh, well, like when it comes, when it's but I do have a belt. I do have a belt that belongs to them. Oh, yeah. Ouch. I, knew I, I knew that was coming. Was, oh, that. Oh, good. yeah. It was, it was definitely kinda, coming. He kind of asked for that. Um, let's see. Somebody else said something about that. Creole. Kelly. Ooh, Kelly. Kelly's got my custom uh, slicker jigs ready. Oh boy. Okay. Cool. Uh, That's about that, about that time too. Uh, Ray, you're fishing out of a sea arc, right? Yes. Is that the dynasty? No, it's a pro guide. 26 sure. foot. Ooh. Okay. Nice boy. I got you. Does uh, <laughs> the Fountain Boys, they got a monster cat? Yeah, they got a monster cat. Okay. Yeah. I, I they, run a, they run a 300. They run a 300 Suzuki. I run a 300 Mercury. Mm. So, gotcha. We've got, to, to kind of give you an idea, our, like our setup on our boats, we've got on a Suzuki, you can't run a lithium battery. Okay. So he has to have a lead acid battery, but all my batteries are all lithium. Okay. So I've got a, uh, I got a 200 amp lithium battery that runs my electronics. I got a 100 and something amp, whatever it is to start the boat. And then I've got 236 amp uh, batteries lithium batteries that run just my trolling motor. They, they're wired up in series. Okay. And then I and then I went with another lithium battery to run my satellite. So the, you know, yes, but it's all lithium, so it doesn't wait. It doesn't right. so to go back to go back and Johnny's got the same thing that I've got because we we made our boats identical. Mm -hmm. So that we so we wouldn't have an issue. Uh, except his is a, his is a monster cap mine's a CR, but it's still right. Still all the same. Yeah. But um, so what we used to do, we would have six 12 volt batteries to run our trolling motor. And that's a lot of weight. Oh, yeah. And then you'd have to have two, you'd have to have two 12 volt batteries just to run your grass. Then you'd have to have another 12 volt battery to start the boat. Because that our starting batteries, that's all we use it for is to start. It doesn't right. it doesn't run anything but the motor. Right. It, you're running all your graphs off that 200 amp hour battery. Yep. Even your live scope. Yep. No kidding. What? What yeah. kind of? What name brand is it? It's a um, Lithium Pro. Lithium Pro. Okay. That's yeah, and it may one. be bigger than that, but I think it's 200. I think it's 200 and something. Yeah, because we've been doing. Zach's been doing some math on what you know his amp draw with what he's got mm -hmm. now, and then adding the live scope. We're like, man, we got to add another battery because we're, well, we're sitting right now. We're we're only we can only get ten hours of use out of the graphs at, at if the battery is hundred percent right out the gate. Yep, and that's probably about where I'm running. But I charge mine every day, so it doesn't. Yeah, you know, I got. But that's that's that sounds right. <laughs> but I, I have to charge. Yeah, well, I, 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 we I, have is I, I just made that upgrade. In fact, I just made the upgrade from all uh, lead acids for my trolling motor to the lithiums. And man, I've been really, really happy with how those lithiums perform. Man, they do great. Yeah, yeah my, I think my lead acid are on their last leg. I, I really can't afford to bite the bullet and go lithium. But now it's way more affordable than it used to be. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Is. I, yeah. think I, I, I think I can get them cheaper than I paid for these lead acid batteries. I got the Duracell Quantum something AGM batteries. Those are expensive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and that's what it takes, though. So to give you an idea, we had uh, 
we went to an, uh, an AGM, I guess. It's a, it's a virgin battery, correct? Mm -hmm. It's never been recycled. Right. right. I was getting four to five years out of six batteries. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now they say, you know, they don't know how long they're going to last. You know, the lithiums. But the AGM, it's worth spending the extra money. You know, you don't have to have a lithium battery, but the AGM, I do believe, don't go buy a Walmart battery because it's not going to last but a year. Right. It, and maybe two years because I was wearing them out with warranties. I'd buy the battery with a two-year warranty, and every two years I was trading my batteries in yep. because they just they wouldn't hold up. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, battery power. And I may be... And I may be I may have a bigger battery back there, but and it may have been the 200 amp battery that's running my satellite. So I may have a bigger battery. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, just thinking about how big your graphs are and then that 22 inch screen and then the live scopes, they draw a lot. Yep. They draw a lot. Yeah. It's so, a little uh, harder. When I, when I plug it up, I was, I was, we was at, uh, we was at Wheeler and there's a hotel right there by the ramp. I don't, I don't know the name of it, but I tripped it. Really? I, tripped the, I tripped the breakers when I plugged up. People was trying to plug up to where I was at, and I was like, y'all can't plug up to me. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm drawing. I'm, I'm making the meter spin when I plug up. <laughs> Burn the barons in the meter. Yep. Yeah, we're, we're trying to put this all together and learn it as as we're moving into the more sophisticated graphs and, and live scopes and that, you know, just the, the lithium side of things, just trying to get it all put together. It's it's a lot. It's a lot to yeah. consider. And, uh, you know, a lot of variables going into the decisions made. Uh, the key, the key to the to, to all of this is time on the water. Yeah. You cannot. You cannot go buy a live scope if you don't fish every weekend. I would, I would, I'm telling you, I wouldn't spend the money on it. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to stay on the water at least to learn it. It's going to take you, if you fish every weekend within six months, you may figure it out. Because you're going to do stuff and you think you're doing it wrong when you was really doing it right, you know. Yeah, you just got to figure it out. Well, get getting on but a boat it, with somebody that knows that's already figured it out would help out a whole bunch. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah, that, that that changes the learning curve quickly. Yeah. yeah, and there's and you know there's guides out there that'll take you and show you, but it's still you got to do it for yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, I could I could give you demonstrations. I could show you things, and you know, but I, I give you too much information, and then boom, you're you're in left field again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I got you. So when it comes to consistency, you know, so, you know, we know you guys, obviously you look on the, the wall behind you, the plaques in front of you, you're consistent. And what do you feel is, uh, is the key to your consistency uh, when it comes to putting together a game plan? You, you know, do you feel that, you know, you understand fish behavior? Do you understand, you know, barometer, is there anything that like when, when Ray's getting ready to go out for a tournament, these are the things on his checklist to say, okay, you know, check this, check this, check this. Okay. I, I need to be doing this or I need to start here at least, at least. Water temperature and wind direction. I want to know which way the wind's going to blow and I want to know what my water temperature is. That's all I need. Time of the year, you know, oh, yeah. time of the year, that's, that's a given. But, but the two things that I look for is the water temperature and which way is the wind blowing. If now, you can you, figure that out, that's the key. Now, when, that's, you talk that's about, everything. when you talk about wind blowing, um, you're talking about like for the day or are you talking about days leading up to the fishing event? Like what the plankton's going to be? Of it. All of it. All of it. Yeah. The wind controls your bait. Yep. So, and then you just got to go from there. And then you got to find somewhere to fish. Yeah. No, yeah. The wind's got to be your friend, in other words. 
you can't find him because it, it, you won't you won't beat the wind. Yeah. Oh man, we've been fishing some terrible wind here lately. It's been kicking our butts oh. back. Yeah. <laughs> when when I moved to Tennessee, the guys they just smoked me. I mean, they smoked me for a whole year. And I come from Georgia. The only thing I'd used in Georgia was bluegill to catch catfish. We'd go catfishing. We would catch stripers, and we would catch uh, catfish. Nothing mm -hmm. but bluegill. No shad. No nothing. So I come up to Tennessee, and I was in the store one day, and I seen this catfish tournament. I said, "Man, I got to go do this. I can catch catfish. Man, I can catch. I'll beat the brakes off these guys." That's all I used. Blue. They smoked me on the Tennessee River. I mean, they beat me. Up. I come in. I'd have thirty pounds. These months have a hundred pounds. These guys are cheap. What? what, what, what is, <laughs> and and they wasn't cheating. But that's the first thing you know. People come. Oh, that guy's cheating. Now, that yeah. guy's cheating. Oh yeah, and the cool thing about this stuff back here, it's all polygraph, right? Yeah. So there, there is no cheating, and and they have a uh, but but at that time, you know, we wasn't doing that. We was just local guys, mm -hmm. and uh, they beat the brakes off of us. And I went with a guide to learn how to catch skipjack. And you would think I would want to go with a guide to learn how to catch catfish. This is a catfish guide. And I, and I told the guy, I said, sir, I said, all I want you to do is show me how to catch a, uh, a skipjack. I don't need nothing else. He said, have you lost your mind? You just take me to go on a, a, a catfish guide trip and you want to just catch bait. I said, yes, sir, that's all I want. Learn how to catch it. And man, he showed me. And then went, and then, then we was able to get the right bait to catch the fish. Right. And uh, he told me, he told me this key thing that still sticks today. What I told you earlier, if there's no fish on the graph, keep moving. And we would go and I'd fish these places and I'd catch a fish here and I'd catch a fish there and, and I'd go right back to that same spot to try to catch that fish. So at the end of the year, they had a classic. And I said, I am not stopping. I was by myself. I said, I'm not stopping until I see fish on my graph. Mm hmm yeah. And I just, I, I didn't start fishing. It started at seven. I didn't fish till 11 o'clock. And at 11 o'clock, within 30 minutes, I won the tournament. There you go. Because I actually went, looked for the fish, and, and called. And, you know, that's, that's 20. That, I didn't, we just got colored graph to tell you how long ago that was. There wasn't even colored was. you, the, there was a pinpoint. The fellow, the guy that took me, had a pinpoint graph that literally uh, wrote out on paper what he was doing. Like mm -hmm. it, it was that's what they call it. You know, he had a little roll that it just printed out so mm -hmm. he could keep it for his record. But that's you know that's how long ago I've been doing it a long time. That's uh that's crazy. I couldn't I couldn't imagine having to read graphs that way or, or use use that type of technology now. Yeah. But when when I was a kid, they just used the little the round, the flasher. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, that's all they used. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, gee whiz. It, it's and what's funny, if you, if, you know, if what's really funny, if you ever look at your graph to the right, well, to my right, that's the same thing. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that? That's what there that is. is. The A scope. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what you're looking at. Is that that's flasher? Exactly what that is. Yep. Yeah. You're looking at a flasher. Yep. You know. Turn it on. There it is. Yeah. 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 You can turn them on and turn them off. I like to. Yeah. Run, it depends on what I'm doing, but I like to run it on, especially up front when I'm trying to catch bait, because it tells me what's there, like right now. Like I don't yeah. have to yep. wait for it really to to, to yeah. come across the screen or whatever. It's it's instant. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yep. I personally seen no fish on sonar waited for them to come to me. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't do, I'm not doing that unless I'm set up on it, like in a Creek mouth or a situation where I know I'm going to ambush fish coming in and out, you know? Yeah. That's, uh, that's totally different. That's totally different. I, yeah. I agree with that, but yeah. we're talking about tournament day. We can't wait. We got to get on that. Right. Yeah. You, yeah. The, the, the clock's ticking, you know, you can't afford yeah. it, but you, you could sit there all day and nothing passed through. Then what, you know, you ain't, yeah, you ain't got yeah. At that point, but I'm not going to sit there all day. No, you know? no, 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 that that kills me to sit there. I get beat. I get beat by a lot of people who just sit still in one spot all day long. 
Yeah. I can do it. I'd go insane. We've got yep. guys here that do that as well. They'll they just sit on the same spot and you know, yeah, sometimes they pull out yep. a wind, but it's not in our blood to sit like that. No. Zach and I are a 20 minute. Oh no. Yeah. 20 minute timer. And that's, that's about it. Uh, and unless it's lunchtime, we might give them 30 minutes while we cook lunch, but yeah. Yeah. There outside you go. of that, it's, we got to go. You want to hear something funny? Absolutely. So Donnie and Lonnie was down there at that tournament in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. They literally reeled all their poles out of the water to eat. I, I to, give, to give them time to eat. They didn't have time that. to eat. They, they didn't have time to eat, so they had to pull their yep. poles up to eat. Oh yeah, that's what's crazy. That's what people are. That's what people are going to go fetch. That's yeah. that's you know, it, like I said, it's fourteen hours for me, maybe fifteen. Uh, but it's on my bucket list. I I got to get down there yep. and do it. Well, yeah, they got a Cabela tournament. There's no other. There, there's, I'm telling you right now. It would be it would be beneficial to go when there's that many people there. So if you do have a problem, like say for example, if you run out of bait or or anything could happen, you know, there's someone there that can help you because you are so far away yeah. from everybody to get a group of people up to say, Hey, look, man, let's just go down there and fish this tournament. There You're is gonna have fun. There is a group of guys yep. here in Ohio that, that make that trip down there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Yep, that's, that's the way to go. Convoy. Oh, Rod, Roger yeah. just called me. Hey, you got some bait? Yeah, I'll be there in a little while. <laughs> yep. I, I make it down there. I plan on stopping at Jeremy and fishing for you. Fishing you there. literally have to pass by my house to go down there. Yeah, you better stop and come get me. Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah, we're just going to stop and pick you up. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't wait for Big Burgess, but I can't wait for you. Hey, you and me both. I'm I'm ex- I'm scared to death and excited all at the same time. Where can you go? Thanks for stopping in, buddy. Where can you go throw seventeen hundred dollars at a hundred thousand? Is what I want to know. Hey, you you got you got yeah. it right there. Yeah, everybody, everybody, and I think there's only like ten spots left. There's not many. Yeah, not so many I mean, you better get on that if you oh, if I'm, anyone anyone can catch it. fish there. Do you agree? Oh, yeah. It, it's If you kind of halfway know what you're doing, you're going to catch a fish. I'm not worried about going skunk in that tournament. Catching yeah. fish shouldn't be a problem. Now, to catch 170 pounds worth, because I think that's what it's going to take to win it, that might be a different story. But catching Two days fish, in a row. Two days in a row. Right. That's right. You Two gotta days be- in a row. Yeah. You got to get through the first 25 first. Right. Ryan Lee caught. 314 pounds of fish in two days. Six yeah. fish. Yeah. Yeah. They, they caught one, yeah. 169 something the first day. And I forget what the weight was for the second day. We were, yeah. we were there live watching the weigh ins whenever all, everybody came through for day one. You know what's funny? I'm going to tell you another funny story now. So, you know, I fished with Melissa. So, Melissa mm-hmm. is not able to come right off mm-hmm. the bat. So, I was by myself fishing. Donnie and Lonnie was together. Mm-hmm. So we put in, I said, look, let's put in right here in this, in this area. And let's, let's fish this area. I'm going to go up. You're going down. They were like, yeah, I'm, we're going down. I'm, I said, I'm going to go up. So I, I, I got on the fish where I was catching them. And Donnie and them seen me. They said, well, we just leave him up there and let him fish a little bit. And then they got tired of waiting on me. And it, it, cause it was getting time to go. Yeah. And uh, so they were, so they swung up there. They, they come up there next to me. I had four suspended poles over. I had a fish on all of them. Wow. <laughs> when they pulled up and what was funny is they pulled up on one side of the boat and I'm rolling it up and I got one going down in the front of me and they got to the other side of the boat and they was like, he's got fished on this side. <laughs> but they had literally what they had done is they'd come up there to, to tell me to come home, but they had stopped when they saw me, and that's where they caught their 90 pounder. And that's where they went and caught all those fish. They actually was coming to get me. Yeah. And they said, Well, we'll just let him, you know, we know he's okay. So we're just gonna bump this area right through here. Yeah. And they bumped down to they caught a 90. Wow. <laughs> so but we literally we literally end up fishing across from each other. 
Yeah. And it wasn't it wasn't even a plan. I didn't even know where they were going. Yeah. You know, yeah. we were fishing against each other, even though we're teammates. They was on their fish and I'm on my fish. And uh but we literally ended up fishing across from each other. And what would have been better than that is if we would have got in there and, and got them. You know, right. if I was able to keep my fish healthy. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that that I mean it was you you have to figure it was such an odd circumstance, you know, because the river was record lows and the temperature was record highs. And mm -hmm. it, it's a situation that even us locals don't see very much that that river was in. You know, same thing. It was like that in Vicksburg and same thing down in New Orleans when that tournament was fished. That's not right. a situation that you see very often. And it kind of created some very unique circumstances that put a lot of fish in certain areas. Curious to see this year what the river does, where it's going to be. I have a feeling it's going to be very different conditions than what everybody fished last year. I'm just curious to see how that's going to play into everything. Oh, yeah. It'd be what I've learned about the Mississippi. Nothing's ever the same. No, no, not, no, not at all. It's going to change and it's going to change. It's going to, when, and when it does change, it changes a lot. Yeah. I've seen I've seen fish on the Mississippi check out. I mean, check out. There won't be a fish. Yep. You you come up to a spot and you're like, there's there's 20 fish in here. Some are come back the next day and they're gone. Yeah. I mean, there ain't even any bait there. Yep. They're, they're just checked right. out. Don't and nothing changed. I've, I've it just went from one day to the next. And I don't know if it's that much of a flow issue or, or what it is. You know, something something just gradually changes, and them fish just check out. Yeah, and we and we we see that very often. You know, those of us that fish it a lot, that we're 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 used to that. The fish are very mobile. It's and they will move. Sometimes they'll move twenty feet. They may be twenty foot towards the seam, twenty foot away from it, back of the hole, front of the hole. Because you've seen it yourself. These features yeah. on the river are huge. There's oh, features yeah. on that river that are acres. So yeah. you could spend all day if you wanted to fish in one scour hole and just keep jogging around and hitting it. You know, it's it's crazy some of the things you see on that river. Oh yeah, and and you often see a whole oak tree come down through there. Yep, that's right. With a root ball that take your boat out. You never know. That's depending that's what on what time of the year it is. Right. That's what we're looking at right now. With they're canceling tournaments this weekend because the, yeah. the Ohio River is getting way nasty right now. With all this rain, yeah. Ray, what trolling motor do you run? Garmin. A Garmin. Yep. How you okay. How you like it? It takes a lot to learn it. it it's something that's not that you just don't pick it up and take off with it. Really? It, yeah. It's it's very, um, it's very precise, and okay. it and it you understand you don't need a trolling motor to be that precise, but it they try to have it exact. Okay. Um, it runs, it, it's super on power though. Like I've got a lot of power. Like I can pull my boat, I think it'll go about almost four miles an hour. Oh, wow. I play six foot boat. That's, that's, that's they, a lot of power. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't, the funny thing is, is they don't say that. They like how much power it puts out. They just say it's a Garmin trolling motor. But you that can run it on like 36 volt and 12 volt. Okay. Really? And I, I, and I run mine on 36. That's right. cool. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good stuff about the the crack controller motors. I just I can't afford to switch over until this one dies. <laughs> yeah, I got a Trova, and it's a tank. And, and and Garmin is really cool about taking care of their product. Uh, Donnie had a a sixteen inch screen, a Garmin. I busted it, like busted it, because it was taking it off the boat. Didn't have locks on it. I take it off the boat, put it back on the boat. Yeah. And I was in I was in Ohio, I think uh summer in Ohio, and I freaking there was a lot of algae growing on the bank. Man, I hit that algae and throw that garment about 10 foot up in there and it busted in all kinds of pieces. Went out there and killed the trolling motor the same day. Went out there and smoked the trolling motor, knocked the belt off of it. And oh. uh he he showed up at the tournament. I was like, dude, we got a busted trolling motor and a busted graph. It was like look at your phone. You know, because the sheet screen was just shattered. Yeah. And uh, we went and got a new troll motor and, and put the graph on, busted up, and used it. I called Garmin. They were like, 
well, we're going to send you another one. Send that one back to us free of charge. What? So she can't beat that. Yeah, free of freaking charge. You ain't going to beat that. That's why. That's why I won't go with anything else. You know, Garmin. I got some graph that was out of warranty, and Garmin took care of. I can't say they're going to do that for everybody, right? But they took care of my stuff. So nice. I think uh, I think one of them twelve inch graphs are like four grand. Yeah, yeah. They don't they don't give them away. No, the eighty six series, and and what's funny is they don't ever update them. Like I mean, they update them, but it's not something new. You know, yeah. the eighty six is the eighty six, right. and they're 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 so far out there. Right. I'm not I'm not familiar with the eighty six series. They they use it a lot in the ocean. It's just right. it's like the true HD screen. I got hmm. you. Yeah, okay. that's what yeah, I thought. And Garmin has their own glass. Like they have Garmin glasses, what they what the guys call it, the bass guys. Yeah. And their Garmin glass, it's it's just different. People say I have had people say they're they're two or three thousand dollar graphs, you can't tell the difference. But I'm telling you right now, all the bass guys, if you look what they run, they run an eighty six series. And they're paying for those graphs. They're not they're not getting them. Garmin will give them their echo maps and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Right. But, but you gotta buy an eighty six hundred. Right. Hmm. They won't they won't give it away. Wow. At least that's what I've heard. Ron B. Dominic will be on my channel Saturday. Oh yeah, we got the uh, Uno tournament coming up Saturday night. I'm out. I don't fish in the dark. Me you don't fish either. in the dark? <laughs> no. Too freaking old, dude. I get up at four o'clock in the morning to go fishing. <laughs> Y'all still be out there at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, I can I could fish twenty four hours. I can fish I've I fished longer than that before on live stream. <laughs> we was we was fishing at Santee Cooper, my buddies. They went out and uh, this is before we knew what we was doing. We didn't even have a clue. We still don't know what we're doing. But we was out there and uh, they had spent the night on the boat. And you know how you run the Santee rig with a float. Right. Well, they put it on the wrong side. You know, the way we used to run it, and you could do it. Now I run it with a three way swivel and I lock my weight down. But before you could have a swivel and, it, you know, your bait would float up. Yeah. So these bugs stopped, anchored in their boats. Their, their bait floated to the top of the water. <laughs> so they were sitting there and uh, they was asleep. And and all of a sudden they heard this, you know, the sun started coming up. They heard this, like the bait runner took off. And it quit. So the guy, like, he was rubbing his eyes. He's like, hey, I think I just got a bite. And about that time, that sucker just took off. And all of a sudden he locked it down and the line started coming out of the water. A seagull done come down and got his face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Oh man. Yeah. So I hey, it works. Yeah. You know, he was he was seagull fishing, but it, it woke him up anyway. I bet it did. But Santee used to have tournaments like that. They would fish 24 hours. Yeah. 36 hours, I think. Some of these online tournaments, like uh they Couple of the cabins got they call the Iron Man tournaments. This is basically last man standing. You might be yep. fishing for three days. Yeah, so I can't. I can't. That's too much for me. It. it I get. If if you go at it hard, somebody asked me one day. They said that. Uh, Do you ever go fun fishing? I said it's all fun fishing. Yeah, it's just the, the different for fun for me is I'm gonna see how many fish I can catch. Not, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna catch a fifty pound. I'm. You're gonna bump into one. You know, but I want to go catch big. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we, it definitely takes some planning and some strategy. You can't, you can't mm -hmm. go, it's a marathon and not a sprint. It is. We have, we have some plans in line for some of these tournaments and whatnot. But I seen uh, Brian said, uh, I'm on Kevin's channel. Yeah. I looked at the channel lineup. I'm like, man, you got me on the channel with freaking Stan Three, Pontoon Jody. You got me stacked (laughs) up against all these. I'm screwed. <laughs> oh, Pontoon Jody, she she don't play around. She she no. she'll get them sometimes. Yeah, she's catching a fifty every time she goes out the door right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, 
but no, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. We we're looking forward to it. Uh, we probably will not be able to fish the river because of the condition it's, it's yeah. heading right now. Uh, so the, the backup plan is Hoover reservoir. So we might be fishing Hoover on uh, Saturday night. So okay. we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. Uh, Zach's yep. not big on night fishing either. Uh, never has been, but, um, uh, we're we're definitely wanting to get into some more flathead fishing this year, so we might we might fish a couple more nights than we normally do. Wait, you live on a you live on the Mississippi, right? No, I live on. Nobody the knows the fish. No, the no, I uh, do. Yeah. yeah, he lives on the Mississippi. You don't want yep. to fish the Mississippi in the dark. No, no. It, it, well, <laughs> number number one, number one is too dangerous, and number two, I, I have fished at night. We used to. I can't I can't catch any good fish at night. All of my big fish come in the middle of the day. I've caught more fifties and over at noon than I have at any other time of the day. Yep. I can tell you why, but I am not. I can tell you why you're doing that. Okay, why is that? I'd I'd love <laughs> okay. to know because I have no idea. Uh, no, I ain't gonna tell you. I gotta fish against you. You but but it, you, it's you, the you same scenario. Worried. You ain't all I can tell you do is think about what you just said. Mm -hmm. you catch more fish in the middle of the day than you do at night there's a right. reason well because i've there's something, something changing what's changing the predators in your water yeah you yep. got sharks yep. dude yeah <laughs> well that, you got well, alligators and well, alligators actually, and sharks <laughs> well actually on on the mississippi itself there are no alligators because they hate that current they won't go anywhere near it but the bull sharks, yes, that does affect things. But the thing is, this is a year-round thing for us. This isn't just for one season when the bull sharks are there. All year, all year, every year for the past five years, middle of the day is – now, your bite slows down, but that's when the big fish bite. You know, numbers slow down, quality goes up the more you go in a day. And, and it's not just me. All the guys that fish locally around here, they all say the same thing. So it's not something necessarily that I'm doing. It's something about the area that's doing that, and I've I've yet to quite figure it out. Look at your look at your little fish. When you're around little fish, mm -hmm. you you don't have the tendency to catch big fish. Right, right. So what happens is is your your little fish eat first, and then your then they'll they'll just lay down there and just lay down. They can't eat anything. And then the big fish, you know, you throw something out there in front of them and you're making it easy. All he's got to do is slide over there and bite it and it's over. Yep. Because so we, we've, not had, gonna we've had that happen to us so many times that we've been set up, you know, fun fishing, set up catching numbers, you know, 10s, 20s, 25s, just, you know, kind of hitting good numbers. Then all of a sudden, like a light switch, the bite will turn off. So there's nothing. And then yep. 10, 15 minutes, just nothing. Then all of a sudden, a rod will just bury. And that's the big one. That's the 50, 60, 70, you know, whatever. So when I pull up an anchor, that's what I look for. I want to see I want to see every one of my rods get hit. Yep. And then I want it to stop. Mm-hmm. If it stops, he's there. Yeah. Because he will eat whatever's pecking at my so they right. got to get what they can, and they run. Right. Mm -hmm. Because he's coming by, and he, I've caught, you would die, but I've caught fish. I've caught blue cats with a head as big as my hand and a 15-pound fish in their mouth mm -hmm. with a catfish. I, I don't know how many, you know, you hear people catching two fish on, but I've done it more than once. And I don't even know how he got the bait in his mouth. Yeah, Roger, y'all just let that happen. Yeah, literally the catfish was stuck in his mouth. Yep. Yeah, we just caught a 53 uh, flathead this last week, and he had a three, four, five-pound drum in his mouth, and he ate a big chunk of white bass. Yep. He, he was still trying to he was still trying to digest the the drum that he had in his throat. We're talking about catfish. I'm saying the blue cats had ate another blue cat. Oh. Oh, yep. I got you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, they they had ate another blue cat and still ate my skipjack head. Yeah, we've seen, oh, we've seen that as well. You know, channel cat or another blue cat and in their in their mm -hmm. mouth. 
Yeah, well, uh, you, you can about imagine our surprise to uh, get you know get some big takedowns, get lines cut. All of a sudden, you finally get a fish to the boat. It's a dang four foot bull shark. I don't, know, I don't know if Bob's still in here, but uh, do you know if King Cat is allowing guides this year to go out with people before a tournament? So uh, Brian uh, Stryker is asking. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I don't think they've ever allowed that. I don't, yeah, I don't. I don't know nothing about it, so I can't speak on it. Yeah. What that what's funny is people people uh we have guys that will come to us, you know, like on a body of water, like we'll be fishing somewhere and a guy to come over to Donnie Lonnie or whoever mm -hmm. and they, they'll start talking to us. They want to know what we're doing. Yeah. They don't want to know what, you know, they they don't want to come off no information. You know, they may tell you where some bait's at, but they want to know how we're catching them. Hmm. I had a guy, I had a guy before the show. He called me from Santee Cooper. He said, "Hey man, what do you you got any ideas about this?" And you know, and we talked for a good twenty minutes. And this is a this is an old timer over there. So there's a lot of information to get scared. But I don't think God helps you if you did go out before a tournament. Hmm. I, think I mean, what do y'all think? I I, I think. The the thing is, I, I guess I guess in my opinion, if you're confident in your abilities of finding fish, then I then I think you'll be okay without one. If if you got to depend on a guy to show you where the fish are, well, yeah. fish change in 24, 48 hours. Everything he showed you may be gone anyway. So it's kind of yeah. to me, it's kind of if you're putting all your faith in that guide and that and you have no knowledge other than that, I say that's dangerous. Yeah. And and the thing is, is, you know, I don't see and, and I would fish against people like that. I don't see that there's a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, if you got a guy that just traveled, say he's fishing the Ohio River mm -hmm. and you need uh, you're going to the Mississippi River and he's never been on the Mississippi River. Wouldn't that be a good idea? To say, hey, you need to go with someone to kind of show you what's going on here. Yeah, to show to show you show you the river, maybe not show you where the fish is at. Yes, show, yes, just to show you, you know, around. Just, yeah. Yeah, just to show you around. Right. You know right. that's that's where that's where people it, it goes back to the money. They think they got an advantage over someone, and you just want, because you fish with a guy, ask my mission. If you want to learn about fishing, you hang out at the weigh-ins. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You hang out at the weigh-ins and talk to folks. Yep. That, you don't have to be the winners. You don't have to be you know whatever, but. You know, after the tournament's over, people are willing to talk about, you know, what was right. working and what wasn't working. And yeah. If, if you were truly into it for the right reasons, you go, you want to know the whys. You don't mm -hmm. need to know yeah. where. Yep. You just need to know the like, why is, is the key. Right. Because yeah. I, I had a I had a friend ask me ask me last year who was fishing Vicksburg and never asked me where the fish were, but he's like, hey, I know you live there. What, what's in this area? Like, are there deep holes? Is there this? What's the bottom look like? Is this? And I, you know, and it was an area that I knew. I'm like, yeah, sure. Here, there's this, there's this, there's this, there's this, you know, this is kind of what it looks like, you know, low river, watch out for this, you know, just ba basic stuff that, you know, some, you know, Google Earth ain't going to show you that because it's, and Navionics is useless, you know, just to know what's under the water around there. Yeah, that's that's the key. Uh, you know, you go to Santee Cooper. Have you ever fished Santee Cooper? Oh no, I haven't. I so very dangerous lake. Mm -hmm. You know, um, stumps. Yeah, you got stumps, shallow water, and wind. Um, yep. If you if you get at the dam at the wrong time in the wrong wind, you're not going to make it back. You're going to have to go beach your boat somewhere. Right. Um, if you jump on Wheeler with the wrong wind, or mm -hmm. really anywhere on the Tennessee River when you have current the wrong wind. Um, that's where it comes to, you know, when you go fish these tournaments and you travel, you know, there's there's got to be people out there and, and we try to be good stewards of that. We try to step up in the meetings and say, hey guys, if you've never done this, this, be careful here, you know, because we know. Uh, I tell people all the time, if you're a black scamp and that flag's sticking straight out, don't go out there. Yeah. There yeah. ain't no sense. There ain't a fish out there. We're fishing the canal. Yeah. You know, don't go out there on that main lake. Yeah. I mean, I mean, look what we were talking earlier about those those wing dams, you know, below Vicksburg. 
I know for a fact that there nobody's map is going to show those wing dams. There's no way everybody's software is going to update that fast because the process hadn't gone through the core yet to update their stuff. We we just right. built it, so nobody's going to know they're there, and that that could be dangerous before daylight. Oh yeah, and that's that's another thing. I don't like these tournaments blasting off before daylight. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think that's cool. I, I don't. Me personally, I don't want to be on the Mississippi River at three o'clock in the morning trying to get somewhere. I, I fish it, and I'm not going to do it. I'll tell you right now, I don't care if I'm the last one that leaves that boat ramp. I'm waiting till I can see. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, too much out there. Yeah, that, I, I know what's out there, and I, I ain't doing it. Mm -mm. Yeah, I agree with you, Austin. I, you know, sharing information with everybody, it's a different ball game when your paycheck's on the line. Yeah. 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 You got to understand, we don't do it for the money. Yeah. We just do it for that, like that green belt. That green belt means a lot to me right now. <laughs> oh man, I love it. That's 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 what's the key, you know. Yeah, you may win ten thousand dollars. Money comes and goes. That green belt's right here. Yeah, it ain't going anywhere. They got someone's got to come take it from me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they are putting me at a disadvantage because they want me to fish tonight. So that's Good. another little deal. So they Good. they keep changing things. Uh oh! Mm, funny how yeah. that works, huh? Yeah, they say, "Well, we don't want to give him. We got to take him out of his element. Yeah. Let's fish at night." Yeah. So yeah. we're gonna see if I can hold on to it. Yep. There's a lot of crazy rules in the online tournament world. Some of these tournaments, oh, yeah. are just, they're just like this tournament this Saturday night, Uno tournament. You might not even catch a fish, and you can win it. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Because of how you know how crazy the rules are, it just yeah. it's it's based just to have fun. It's not going to show yeah. who's oh, the best yeah. angler. It's not going to be. No. It's good. It's, it's a it's a game of luck, really. Yeah, and I've uh, I've said it so many times that these online tournaments, you know, you know the 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 live tournaments, it's a lot more about body of water versus body of water than it is angler versus angler. To be honest, yeah. with you. you know, people you you're either at an advantage or disadvantage depending on where your home waters are. Yeah, it's it's hard for us to compete on the Ohio River. We we give it a go. Right. We, we we stay pretty competitive for what we're given down here. Mm -hmm. But in real in the big scheme of things, you know, Ohio River's not going to hang with the Mississippi or the right. James River or the Tennessee River ninety percent of the time. Every now and then we can we can upset some folks, but for the most well, part, I don't know now. It depends on where you're fishing at on the Ohio. Where are you fishing? I'm fishing about. Hour and a half, two hours above Cincinnati. Uh oh, you froze. Cincinnati's where I busted that grass. Oh, we, uh, you can you can catch them there. You can catch them there if the conditions are right. You know, right. your conditions got to. You got to make sure the freaking commercial fishermen ain't out there wearing you out. Oh, we we got that everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I think I, we're going to fish the Cumberland, and I think they've actually raped. The, the Cumberland River. Yeah. Uh, they they got these uh, big silver aluminum boats. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and Amish guys, they're Amish or something. Mennonites or something, but they're down there. They've got some boats that are like 30 foot long. I don't even know how they get them down the road. Yeah. But, but they are, they're definitely catching some fish. Yeah. And I think they're catching them car. But I'm thinking they're catching the catfish too in their nets. Yeah, because okay. they're they're starting to catch Asian carp around here. Uh, commercial fishermen told me that they're shipping them somewhere now. They're starting to catch them. I'm like, yes, take them all, get them out of there. Yeah, they they had never get them all, uh -oh. but I'd love to see it. Well, guys, we got to get things wrapped up, man. I did, I just realized it's almost ten o'clock. We've been We've been rolling. I, we knew we could do that. Hey, we, we hung out at CatCon. We stayed up till way later than this talking about yeah. fishing. It's easy to do. And what, what did I tell y'all? I had to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said, dude, we, we cooked, we had fun, and then y'all wanted to talk. And then Steve sat down and he wanted to talk. And we just kept going. And I was like, hey, y'all, we got to go. I got to go to bed. Yeah. Finally, I just stood up and I said, good night. I'm done with y'all. <laughs> yeah, 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 we had to do the same thing. 
Well, listen, we, yeah, do, yeah. Have a hot, we do have a hot spotlight for you guys tonight uh, put together by Kelly again. Yep. And uh, so we're going to end up closing this thing out. But, uh, Ray, it was awesome hanging out with you. There was Absolutely. a lot of comments in chat saying thank you for all the information tonight. Uh, just just selfishly, uh, selflessly sharing, you know, your your knowledge and all the things that you've time and money you've spent on the water and you just give it away to somebody that's willing to listen. So truly appreciate, oh, yeah. your, truly appreciate your time, man. Um, hey, if, if anyone ever sees me out, don't be just come over. I'll help you. I'll tell you that if Melissa will tell you, I will tell you where the fish are. All you got to do is go catch them. Well, yeah, I'll, because, I'll, I'll remember that when I see you in the water in Vicksburg, I'll just come right on yeah. over to the boat. Hey, where the fish are at? I think you know, I'll tell you. I, hey, I won't. I won't. I'll, there's. Listen, it's all about catching fish. Oh, yeah. To me, there the money is not. There's. There, you cannot. That hundred thousand dollar tournament, I'll still be in the hole. Oh. You know, but you're not going. You're not going. <laughs> you're never going to get out. Of, if you fish, you will never make enough money fishing. I promise you. That's I, what they say. If, yeah. if you want, if you want to learn how to become a millionaire at fishing. First, you start as a billionaire. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because it's you're going to spend, you're going to spend and spend and spend and spend. Yep. That's right. Because there's always a new technology. There's always a new fishing pole. And, and you know, when we was doing this, we just used whatever we had. Yeah. And uh, Meat Hunter rods was the first catfish rod that, that I'd really ever had. Mm -hmm. And... Me and him talked super, super guy, super guy. Mm -hmm. And I was telling him what the fish was, what, what I could do with the pole. And and he was like, yeah. And uh, so there's, and it's, now you got the ambles, you got, uh, it's just, it just never, it never ends. Mm -hmm. and it's always, it's just a little bit better, a little bit better. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps changing. I seen some new B&M rods out the other day. I heard so, about those. Yeah, they're catching up. They're catching up, and they're catching on that you know you got to have different rods. Right. One rod's not going to get it done. Right. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we're going to close that out with the spotlight. Thanks again, Ray. We will see you guys here next Tuesday night, same cat time, same cat channel. Good night, everybody. Well, everybody. All right. We'll see. You. This is the emergency broadcast system. The CDC is advising that you stay in your home. We still want. Up in the party, fire than everybody. We show up in the party, fire than everybody. We show up in the party, fire than everybody. We show up in the party, fire than everybody. We show up in the party, fire than everybody. We show up in the party. We show up in the party. We show up in the party.